What's up guys and welcome to the channel. This is like the first time being in AC today, but it was hot. It was like 90, extremely humid, dripping sweat all day at work. And we're home to come and provide you guys with some crazy, crazy cool content. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video about installing a Flow Pro 5 inch exhaust, which is now paired with a 5 to 6 inch rolling big power tip. If you didn't see my last video, go check that out. But my friends over at Flow Pro Exhaust watched that video and we were talking ever since. And uh, I want to say thank you guys for joining. Well, I mean, adding to the build. They have sent us a box of goodies. I wonder what this could be. Ooh. More cool stickers. Man, what is that? Okay. What is all this stuff? That's right, guys. Our friends over at Flow Pro Performance Exhaust hooked us up with, let's call it an EGR upgrade kit. There were not many of these name brand kits on the market. And when I found out Flow Pro made this, I couldn't think of a better way to pair with my exhaust pipe than more Flow Pro parts. And I can't thank them enough. This is amazing. And today, we're gonna be hopping into this. Uh, it's a little late, it's about 6.30, so I hope I can knock this out before the sun goes down. Do I think so? Probably not. But we do have lighting and we can probably get this all achieved. Now this is the perfect thing for this channel because I always tell you guys, do things yourself. Have I ever done this to an EGR before? No, I haven't. And if I took it somewhere, it would easily cost me $700 to $1,000 in labor. But doing it myself is creating me a learning experience and I save all that money. Upgrading this thing is pretty straightforward and we're gonna hop into it. Doing engine work on a lifted truck, it makes it so much harder, but still can be done. We're gonna start off by disconnecting the, the negative battery terminals and then start working our way to this plastic cover. All right, so next up here is we're gonna get the crossover pipe out. And I can tell you that they purposefully put this stuff in a dumb location. So you go get it serviced at a dealer. But we're gonna take this clamp off and that clamp over there and get this crossover pipe off. Yeah. Okay, down in here, there's an eight mil bolt you need to take out to get this crossover pipe out. It helps to loosen. So the driver's side is super, super easy. Getting the EGR valve off itself is just gonna be these four 10 mil bolts. Now mind you, my truck has 7,000 miles on it. Look at that. All of this is what's being pumped back into the engine. So your truck is pretty much breathing this. Um, look at that. This truck has 7,000 miles and it's sucking completely black soot. Not good. Don't forget to take your gaskets off of the intake over here. Now over to this side, we gotta take this heat shield off so we can get to the rest of this. All right guys, so we got this disconnected. There's uh, 10 mils down here and on the other side. I'm having an enormous, enormous amount of trouble getting this 10 mil out over here. Wrench doesn't want to fit. Uh, I can't I can't get a good torque on it, so I'm kind of stuck here. A socket doesn't fit in, runs into this tube, so I'm a little stuck with that half. However, with this disconnected now and out of the way, it gives us access to the rest of the cooler here. So if we loosen this clamp up here, this portion disconnects from the cooler. So I think we're gonna work with it like that. So the most of the time when people are like, oh, it's hot outside, stuff like that, but no, look. Dripping, dripping sweat. It is so humid, so hot. Thankfully, this light finally turned on. We got the crank case. Wow, that's actually incredible how much light comes in here. Um, but we got the crank case breather tube off. This is still dangling here. I haven't even tried with that nut. I'm gonna try and do this by getting the cooler out 
and then just taking the thing out as a whole. But now we're gonna remove, now we have to remove the two coolant lines going to the EGR, and uh, then we can start taking out these uh, 10 mils, and then those two dumb bolts in the back. Don't be jealous of my pliers. I forgot my other ones that work. couple perfect examples here of they definitely put this stuff in dumb locations so you get it serviced. This right here, this bolt on the underside of this clamp, stupid. The fact that that 10 millimeter bolt right there is underneath the breather tube so you can't get a uh, socket in there, you have to use a, a wrench, yeah. 10 mil down here, oh yeah, still haven't got it out. This hose does not want to come off either. I got the o-ring in there right now it's kind of pinched uh, definitely bloody knuckles but we're gonna go for those 15s in the back for this part guys I don't know if you can see but le legitimately you could stick um, with the air intake out you could stick the entire ratchet back here with an extension to get these bolts or these nuts rather and it is not that difficult just same thing with both sides if you you know you could stick your hand up here like I got this to hold the head down and you can stick it all the way back here. There's plenty of room in the firewall to get to these nuts. Uh, I'm actually surprised at how easy these two are to get out. Okay guys, one more bolt. And this cooler can come out. Guessing it's a 10 mil, yes it is. Alright guys, so let me tell you, so far, oh, I had to take my watch off because I couldn't reach behind the firewall, look at that watch tan, um, but so far, I mean, it hasn't been hard, time consuming, a uh, few things are a little, eh, definitely not a hard process, not at all, I mean, I've got a few more things left, you know, it's been about three hours, um, so I would say, you know, the four hour mark, like everyone says, is just about right, I personally did not drain the coolant first, Everything I found online that said where the coolant drain is, uh, not there. The videos I've seen for like the 2010s and the, the 2014s, stuff like that, the drain is not in the same spot. So if anyone knows what the 2017 Ram 2500 coolant drain is with the Cummins, please let me know in the comments below. Uh, everyone says, you know, driver's side bumper right there. It is not there. I don't know if it's covered by some plastic or something now, but cannot find it. However, it only made a small mess with the coolant. My hands are a little sticky. Probably should be wearing gloves. I keep washing them every time I touch, every time I touch coolant. But pretty much, we gotta take this uh, last part off, and then we can start installing our uh, block off plate and and our reroute for the coolant. may have just found the remedy oh yeah come on come to papa oh yeah we got it 10-4 we got him don't you worry come on out mm -hmm. this would be ideal with like a swivel gear wrench but i don't have that Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. Now if you guys want to see how many nuts and bolts I've taken out, um, here we go. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Keep them coming. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't forget the, the clamps and those and all those bolts down there. 
yeah, it's a lot. Anyway, this should, there we go. Okay, so it's time to put the plates on. Obviously the one with the EGT port goes in the rear. So when you're racing and stuff, you can put your probe into here. So this one goes in the back, and this one goes in front. And tighten. Next thing we need to do is install our coolant reroute and our crankcase breather connected back up and we'll be good to go. All right guys, I'm just gonna finish up here. It's late, I'm gonna try to be quiet. It is, again with the watch, I forgot it wasn't on. It's like 11, 11-ish, 11 pretty much we're all done. Uh, I'm not gonna start it um, low on coolant because it all kind of drained out there. So I'm gonna run to the store tomorrow and pick up some more coolant so I can fill it up. Yeah, we're all done. Super easy process. You know, it's 11 and I started at like six, but in between I messed around, went up, you know, went upstairs, got some water. It took some time, but it most definitely is most definitely able to get done at home with little to no experience. Um, I say I knew how to do it. I've never done one before and this is my first one. It, it was okay, I mean, it is something that's good, you know, you just gotta be patient with it. And that's all I could say. So bracket and all that stuff is out. Driver's side is out. I just gotta clean up all my tools and stuff off the back shelf here, but I put this back on. That's just my preference. I like the look of the 6.7, the way the 6.7 looks. Some people like the 5.9 and they want it to make it look like a 5.9. I just want my 6.7 to look like a 6.7. So I put this back on, uh, just two bolts because those other ones are no longer uh, usable, but still pretty sturdy. So like I said, super easy process and you can most definitely do it at home. A lot easier than you think. And most of the time self-explanatory. But I'm gonna say thank you guys for watching. Take care, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. See you guys in the next video. If you have not been here before and you enjoyed this, please click subscribe.